today we celebrate International Peace Day. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. Martin Luther King. I'm Nancy Trooks, and I'm chair of the Peace Builders Committee at Columbus Rotary. And I want to tell you a story of how we started and who we are. Two and a half years ago, I was in Florida with my husband, and as we often do, we visited a Rotary Club. And at that Rotary Club, uh, one of the members, Raj, a man of Indian descent, spoke impromptu. He told a story of how a friend of his many years ago in India had called him and asked his advice. He said, I have a son, you know, and I was thinking about sending him to college in America. I, I'm not sure, though. And Raj said, well, of course, send him to college. Said, we have great education. And the friend said, well, I don't know, with the gun violence and all that. And Raj said, that's, that's hyped in the media. He'll be fine. And so his son came to college. He came to graduate school, and he got a wonderful job at Google. And Raj said, the previous Friday night, he was in a bar having a beer with a friend. And in walks a man with a gun. Point, he says, get out of my country and shot him dead. Raj looked at us, Rotarians, and he said, what am I to tell my friend? What am I to tell my friend about America? And I walked out of there, and I thought, this is wrong. And I, I needed to do something. And then I thought, you know, I've just been at a Rotary meeting. And Rotary has the power. It's nonpartisan, nonpolitical, nonreligious, cross-cultural, international. We have the power to change the trend of hate. So I went home. And I talked to the Rotary Board, Columbus Rotary Board, and they said, absolutely, go forth. And so since that time, peace builders have started to be a part of the solution to the problem of hate that was and is spreading through our culture. We have gathered people in peace across differences, community meetings, worked with adults and youth to build peacemaking skills. About six months ago, we decided to get more focused in our efforts. We decided to focus on Linden for three reasons. One, Linden is a targeted neighborhood of the United Way. Two, the, Linden, the One Linden Plan demonstrated that a lot of good things were happening in the community. And three, we had a few Rotarians who were already committed to the area. So our first effort in Linden came as Columbus Rotary was invited by our speaker today, Adam Troy, to participate in their first June 2nd One Linden Festival celebration, bringing all segments of Linden together in one community event. And you will see the, the video of this awesome event. Food trucks, over 1,000 people were fed. 1,500 people attended, all kinds of events. And with all this, these people, the diversity, not one incident of violence. So who is this man, man Adam Troy, who you will be hearing from today? Not <laughs> Adam is president of the Community of Caring Development Foundation, an affiliate of New Salem Baptist Church. As president, Adam has utilized his impressive background in business development and relationship building to connect governments, corporations, and community-based organizations to join forces to improve the quality of life for all who live in Columbus, and particularly the Linden community. Over the past two decades, 
Adam has established a unique career path serving as a trusted advisor to a wide range of business, community, and political leaders. He has developed a legacy of community service within several civic and philanthropic organizations, including the United Way of Central Ohio, Columbus Symphony Orchestra, Mansion Day School, and Action for Children. A Columbus native, Adam holds a bachelor's degree in banking and finance from Morehouse College, Atlanta, Georgia. To give you, though, a picture of the man, let me tell you a story that Adam tells about a proverbial Jamal. So about 20 years ago, Adam was at the church unloading some boxes from his sister-in-law's car. And he saw a young man come down the alley, walking down the alley. He didn't pay any attention to him. But shortly thereafter, on the PA, he heard the announcement, Mrs. Troy's car has been broken into. And then, a minute later, he sees the preacher come out of the church, his brother. And he's following Jamal as Jamal is weaving between cars on Cleveland Avenue. And soon the preacher is following him. And then Adam sees that they're heading for the house that Habitat for Humanity built. So he heads there in the opposite direction of his brother, and they meet Jamal midway. And they see that he's stolen a cell phone. Well, Jamal pulls back his shirt, and he says, he shows him he's got a gun. Well, Adam and his brother figured, mm, don't want this to be my last day on earth, so I'm backing up. Um, because what the boy says is, back up. You don't know me. So they back up, figuring a cell phone is not worth their lives. And the boy, you know, they go back, they report it at the church and the boy is captured in a few hours. Well, turns out they didn't know him. The boy lived six doors down from the church in a house of prostitution. The incident served as an inspiration for the church and set the stage for the foundation they made a commitment, never again would this happen. They committed to expand their sphere of influence and sense of responsibility to the neighborhood. That is our speaker today, a man who, although not yet a Rotarian, is a man who lives by service above self. Please give a warm Rotary welcome to Adam Troy. Nancy, Landon Adams is in the uh, back. He's the man with the checkbook. Landon, raise your hand. There you go. That's who you would have to, to see. Uh, let's give Nancy another round of applause for that phenomenal introduction. <clears throat> now, I have been to one of these Rotary meetings before, so I clearly understand the limitations of time and text. So I'm not going to be up here talking to you for a long time, because I know by Constitution at 12.05, you guys are out of here. For New Salem, that's kind of like our 7.30 service, right? Our 7.30 service, we're sort of in and out. Um, but let me thank Nancy, my uh, friend and colleague for over 30 years. Rick Studer is someplace in the room. Rick, raise, raise your hand. Give Rick a round of applause. He and I have known each other for 30-something years. Thank you for introducing me uh, to this uh, group. Both of them over the last 12 months have been phenomenal ambassadors on behalf of the Rotary to Linden, so you just need to, to know that. Uh, let me do this, because I'd be remiss if I didn't clear this up, particularly for uh, those that are here from New Salem. So you'll notice in the program, and you've heard people refer to yours truly as Reverend and Pastor. Let me be very clear. There are three Reverend Troys. I am not one of them. They are all related to me, but some would say I'm just kind of responsible for their uh, retirement plans. I'd like to stay in that lane, but thank you for, for the acknowledgement. Having said that, 
two months ago, let me give you a quick backdrop. Nancy and I were sitting at that back table, um, and we talked about uh, today's date. And um, we talked about giving you an opportunity to learn a little bit more about Lyndon and me coming to do a keynote. Now, you have to understand, at our church, we hear some pretty phenomenal speakers and people who actually get paid to speak. So unless I'm coming up here saying something absolutely phenomenal, or you got somebody that's absolutely phenomenal, I'm probably not going to be that impressed by what I'm saying or anything else. But what I thought would be a cool idea, particularly given the limitations of time, would simply be to introduce you to some of the people who I have an enormous opportunity to do work with day in and day out, all in Linden. They are not going to be people whose names that you typically see in the media. In fact, most of them work uh, in the shadows. But I thought it would be sort of a cool idea, and both Rick and Nancy agreed, to simply bring in those that we often refer to uh, as the Linden ambassadors. There is an African proverb that essentially says, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. So let me introduce you real quick to some of the people uh, who are going together uh, with us over the past uh, two years. I'm just going to ask them to stand real quick where you are just so you have an idea of who's in the room um, with you. Gamal Harding, who serves as our advisory uh, council member, he heads up our real estate platform. Gamal, I'm glad that you got another gentleman sitting at the table because that's a lot, a lot of women to handle there, <laughs> you know. But uh, give him a round of applause. Andrea Boxio is here from the Department of Health. She's also part of our advisory council. There she is in the back over there. Wonderful. <laughs> Carla Coleman, who's a uh, director. She's a member of the board for our CDC. She's director of external communications. Uh, Nick Bankston, where is Nick? Nick is one of the most humble, works for the city of Columbus. Now, everybody needs to know, this is the guy that is the architect of the one Linden plan. Absolutely give him a round of applause, because the shepherd that plan was phenomenal. You guys at that table are going to be in for a uh, treat. Peggy Williams, the Sojourner Truth of Linden. Where are you? She is the secretary for the South <laughs> Linden Eric Commission. Ani Walimo, who is the new director of youth at New Salem. I'm so excited about what this guy is going to be doing. He is there, travels all over the world. We now have him back in-house, so he's doing phenomenal work there. Miguel Tucker, Miguel Gino, are you, we refer to him as Gino. Gino has a phenomenal uh, program. He is the president of Remember Us Scouting Program. You guys at that table absolutely want to hear uh, what's going on. And as a finance guy, I see business plans all the time. This young man put together one of the most phenomenal business plans I've ever seen. So Gino, thanks for coming and joining us today. <laughs> chairman of the South Linden Area Commission, Lawrence Carwell. LC, where are you? Right there, wonderful. That's our chairman for the South Linden Area Commission. David Williams is here. He's a member of New Salem. He's our director of membership. Works over at the high school every Friday with a group of men. Thanks for coming out, David, because I know today is normally your day off, so thank you for being here. John Boxhill, who's our chief operating officer, he's the guy we blame when everything goes wrong. So he's sitting right there. Tremendous background in, in health care. Catherine Swidarski, she is all things Linden. Where are you? There she is. We call her Swid. Give her a round of applause. Safe program. The Senator, Jasmine Ayers, with the Huck House. She also serves as our Director of uh, Community Engagement. Let's give her a round of applause as well. Our superstar, Dwayne Bland. Most of you hear about Linda McKinley High School, but you don't get a chance to know the man behind the scenes. Dwayne, where are you, Principal Bland? Sitting right there. Wonderful. That's our principal. Did you bring brochures? Everybody, please make sure you get a Linda McKinley High School brochure. They are phenomenal. All right. Kim Avery, head of education. She's on our board as well, director over at Verizon. Recently took a buyout. You got a little time on your hands, don't you? <laughs> Landon Adams, who heads up our uh, community wealth building initiative. He's also one of the directors for the uh, Development Corporation as well. Thank you for being here. Michelle Jamison, did I miss you? She's a resident in Linden, serves on the South Linden Area Commission. Where's Michelle? Did she leave? All right, wonderful. Give her a round of applause even in her absence. I think that's everybody. Um, Sterling Carter, where are you? Is he still? He's sitting right here. Listen, this is, this is the next Spike Lee. I'm letting y'all in on a little secret. This is the next Spike Lee. Just moved to Columbus from Houston. He does phenomenal work. In fact, the video that I'm going to show you, this guy put together. Real quick story, and this is kind of how I work. I met this guy on a Wednesday a year ago. I was doing uh, an event similar to this on a Saturday. He had, I said, what are you doing? I'm, come from the media, so I'm looking at his work, I could tell he's pretty talented. So I said, what are you doing Saturday? Keep in mind, it's Wednesday. 
just meeting this guy. I said, what are you doing Saturday? He says, I got an event. I'm doing a TEDx. Pretty big deal. I said, what time is that? He says, 9 o'clock in the morning. I said, dude, we got plenty of time. Meet me at 5 a.m. and we're going to shoot this video. He was there. Now, y'all know that doesn't happen, really happen with millennials. So he's kind of an exception to the rule. He's been hanging out with me for the last year doing phenomenal work. And so what I'd like to do is to not spend a lot of time talking about what it is we do, but show you how this group of Linden ambassadors you just got introduced to came together several uh, months ago. Uh, and then I'll come back and sort of give you the rules of engagement. Is that all right? That's all right? Do I get one of those woo-hoos you normally do? There we go. All right. Can we roll video, Scott? And for a variety of reasons, we had difficulty getting it done. But I said, listen, you can bring everything down. You can make it easier on yourself if, in fact, you just put it in one of the parks and they missed the point. We were trying to showcase Linda. We said, no, we're going right down to Linda Avenue. <laughs> Today was an absolute labor of love. So many different organizations, so many different groups, so many different people coming together. It's really about one Linden, celebrating our differences, our similarities, and spending time fellowship. This was an amazing experience, and we are so proud to be part of it. We love this community with our whole heart, and we can't wait to come back next year and do it bigger and better. We fed the community, we danced, we played basketball, we shared information. It was a great day. And I'm appreciative to all of the community who showed up and had a good time and shared the world. Yeah, give all my ambassadors a round of applause. Sterling Carter, raise your hand again. Sterling, put that piece together. Thank you. <laughs> Sterling, did you bring business cards? I'm here working for you, man. I'm trying to make sure. Uh, if you like that uh, voiceover, it was the voice of Jasmine Ayers. Jasmine, raise your hand. She's probably for hire. If you didn't like her, then we'll tell them it was somebody else, right? So thank you for doing that. Real quick, again, just based upon the, the limitations of of time and text that we have. Today's theme is really around uh, creating a connected community. When we put together our CDC, um, even inside of New Salem, we have 60 plus programs and ministries. We didn't need another program. There were a lot of cool stuff already happening in Linden. Uh, but what we are pretty good at is partnerships. What we are pretty good at is, is residing at what we call the intersection of both sacred and secular. And so we began to focus our resources on a six to seven block area, pulling in all of our relationships, capital, bricks and sticks as well. And so for the past two years, we've really been focused on getting um, the right people in the room and building out our relationships. Today is simply an extension of that. Um, if you are truly sincere about the revitalization of Columbus and more specifically Linden, we welcome you to work alongside of us. Our hope is that today you'll establish some new relationships again with people who are typically working in the shadows, but getting it done 10, 12 hours every day, making meaningful impact. You need to get to know these folks. For the Linden ambassadors that are here, there are some relationships here that are outside of this room you probably would never connect with. They need to understand better what it is you're doing, where you need help at, right? Where do we see opportunities to engage with? So for the next, 20 minutes or so. We want you to get to know the people at your table. 
if I've got uh, ambassadors um, who are two at a table, or I've got like these guys right here, Jasmine, can you shift over here? Because I see Ani's at that table right there. You guys are going to be in a treat because I'm telling you, this is the next senator, one of the next senators in, in Columbus, Ohio. So um, if I've got some gaps there, ambassadors, I need you to move, right? You can do it expeditiously when we get ready to go. Um, everybody also, in celebration of today's theme, and as an extension of what we're talking about, is there anybody that does not have one of these bands? Hold these bands up. Grab them if they're on your table. Hold these bands up. They should say, are you, okay, you're holding them up. You're not raising your hand telling me you don't have them, right? Okay. <laughs> uh, so, um, it should say calling all connectors. Um, that's what we're really about. That is what I see. If you are interested in being a connector, then we need to be making connections with you. It also should say on your band, I see you. Do you see that on the other side of your band? I actually took that script, I'm a big movie buff, Avatar, I love Avatar, and that, one of the central themes of that movie is two individuals who come from different worlds, different ethnicities, different uh, social backgrounds, really trying to understand one another. And seeing one another, oftentimes we don't do as we need to, has to go beyond the optics. So that is a reminder every day to stop and when we see people to really try to understand what world they're coming from. It helps us remain relevant and do the work that you've just seen there. So again, congratulations to all those who helped us pull that together. Uh, we do have a date, Carl. I know you're going to tell me before this day is over, 20, 20 date, right? So we can make sure everybody uh, is aware of when that's happening. But it was a cool event, first time it's ever happened. As you heard, over 1,500 people got together, and it was just one big family reunion. White collar, blue collar, no collar, young, old. Uh, plenty of food. I know we had to have food, right? And we fed over a thousand people, which is absolutely pretty phenomenal. So today, we look forward um, to getting to know you better. The rules of engagement are simply that. Get to know my ambassadors, my ambassadors, get to know the folks around the table and understand why it is that we're in this room uh, trying to serve, right? Okay, Nancy, is that good? Rick, am I all right? Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you guys for the time you've allotted. We'll come back to the mic and follow the instructions, but I guarantee you, you'll be out of here by 12.05. All right, thank you. All right, we're going to ask you to bring your conversations to uh, close. Man, a lot of good energy, a lot of good energy. Give yourself a round of applause. This has been great. I know at our table. Did you learn some stuff today? Did you get a chance to meet some people that uh, otherwise you wouldn't have not connected with? That is great. Um, clearly. Miguel, you get any funding? All right, keep working on it. Keep, 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 keep working on it. Principal Bland, we okay over there? Do you have to get back to school? All right, wonderful. All right, listen. On behalf of certainly our board of directors, um, our church, and again, all the people who are represented in this room that do work in the shadows of Linden every day, um, there are about 15 of us in the room who represent a number of people who could have easily sat in this room as well, but oftentimes are working um, second and, and third shift and don't get an opportunity to be in the space. Um, we work in the margins. Um, as Ms. Pegg knows, our, our job is to hold the elevator door open long enough so that others can get in and tell their story and hopefully stand on our shoulders as we are working with them. We have a saying inside of our church that, yes, Lyndon needs us, but we also need Lyndon. We also very much need Lyndon. And so we thank you for your time and attention today. Again, for all my ambassadors, thank you for carving out the time. I know some of you have to get back to work. There are a number of you who are here at the table who I absolutely cannot afford on an hourly basis, so I need you to get back to, to, to work. So let me uh, yield. Thank you again, and I'm going to call your leader back to the table. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. And uh, I do want to, so we do, do we still have the green cards today on the table, Scott? I should ask that question. No, they're not there today, so we don't have that normal finish. A reminder that Columbus Rotary Nights was switched to a Wednesday this month, and it's this week on Wednesday nights. So if you want to join the folks at the Goat Restaurant downtown, starting at 530. Uh, next week, our, uh, we will have more district, gov or district uh, 
leaders in the thing. So District Governor Gary Vaughn will be with us next. Rotary District Governor Gary Vaughn will be here next week. Um, and we also will keep, be kicking off our annual service campaign next week. So we've been doing uh, the Rotary leadership has already uh, been working out. The rest of you are going to get your uh, plea next week, if you will, for our annual service campaign. With that, Adam, I, I, yeah, I know you'd rather do the. the oh, ring, I get the ring, ring bell. bell. I'm, I'm going to pass my duties here to Adam. <laughs> Ah. Thank you all.